Hi everyone, this is Adam Elstein. Today I'm going to be talking about raw workflow. Specifically, I'm going to be talking about how to bring your images out of Bridge through the Adobe Camera Raw plugin into Photoshop. All of the edits I'm going to be discussing today will take place in the Camera Raw plugin um, and we will discuss Photoshop at a later date. These days, the Camera Raw plugin is pretty good. A lot of the stuff that I used to do in Photoshop, I now do in Camera Raw, as do many imaging professionals. Uh, so I recommend that you use Camera Raw as uh, the place to make the majority of your global edits and indeed some local edits. Don't know what those two terms mean? I will discuss them further. But let's get back to the shoot we're working on. If you recall, the idea was um, to do a kind of uh, collection of images of mailboxes in Sag Harbor, New York. We went through the shoot we identified a few images that probably were the ones that fit our criteria. This is where the boxes were in the middle. I did this, if you recall, by applying some stars in the filter area. I've just clicked the three star zone. Uh, and I'm going to look at some of these images, decide which one I want to work on today. Ah, let's do this one because I think it will present some interesting challenges. I like the composition. Um, don't necessarily like the lighting. Uh, don't necessarily um, like the fact that uh, the leave area is dark. I don't like the fact that this uh, picket fence, which should be uh, brighter and whiter, is in shadow. Uh, but I'm going to see um, what I can do with global edits. Also don't like the fact that this foreground area feels very hot to me, um, which makes sense because it was early in the morning and the sun was primarily hitting the street. Let's see what we can do. Let's open the image in camera raw. Many ways to do it. Probably the easiest is to come up to the toolbar to find a little icon that looks like a camera iris. You click on it. Now we're in camera raw. Uh, the way that I have my camera raw set up is uh, to monopolize my whole screen. Um, there's a little button up here. I can click it to make it smaller so that I can get to other um, applications if I need to. But let's go back to full screen mode. A few preliminaries. Number one. Uh, in the area below the image, uh, some blue text. Let's click that. This is your workflow options. This is important to set up. Uh, these will govern how the image is ultimately translated. Uh, it will um, make some technical choices uh, that will basically um, determine the quality of the output. Uh, we choose the color space. I'm going to recommend in this class we work in Pro Photo RGB. That's a very broad color space. It's debatable on some more uh, technical levels. Uh, is it really necessary? Let's work in the large color space. Uh, bit depth. I'm also going to recommend we work at 16 bits per channel. Again, debatable. We could work at 8 bits per channel, which is lower. It would result in smaller files. Let's work with the larger, better files. Hit OK. Uh, the second thing I'm going to talk about um, are the clipping warnings up here. Uh, these are the little triangles on the right and left side of the histogram. We're going to make sure that those are on. It's a little tricky to be sure that they're on. You need to see there's a little box, a um, little white box that's around them. Uh, and we can test this basically by taking the exposure slider. Let's crank it all the way to the right. Uh, when we crank it all the way, you see that uh, red areas emerge. Those are areas where we're losing detail um, due to highlight clipping. Crank it all the way to the left. You'll notice blue areas emerge. That's where we're uh, losing detail due to um, shadow clipping. So let's bring it back to the center zero. Okay. Global editing workflow. Several steps. First step, always try, rarely succeed, is the auto adjustment. There's a little button over the exposure. Uh, click it. It says auto. Let's see what happens. Well, in this case, it made the image slightly darker. I can go back to the default and you can see the difference. Um, it made the image darker. Uh, doesn't give me a feeling that I specifically like, um, and so I'm going to not use auto. Sometimes auto is, um, is enough. Step two, color balance. You can generally follow the steps in the uh, order from top to bottom in this basics um, panel here. What is color balance? Color balance is, is the embedded color relationship uh, within an image. Uh, there's two parameters, temperature and tint. Temperature basically um, will control uh, the blue-yellow balance and tint will control the green-magenta balance. Uh, all light has an embedded color temperature. We'll discuss that at other points in the class, but within Camera Raw, you can play with your color temperature. There's two ways to do this. You can kind of season to taste. 
by dragging the slider back and forth. If I drag this all the way over, it makes it warmer. It starts to feel like a 1970s Kodachrome image. Um, so we can do this to taste, as it were. Um, or uh, the more precise technique is to come up to the toolbar to grab the third tool from the left, which looks like a little eyedropper, and to find an area in the image uh, which is basically a kind of a neutral mid-gray. Now, when I uh, shoot images professionally, I always use uh, a reference um, gray card. Uh, that's what most photographers do in order to um, make sure that the color um, really is um, what we see with our eye. But in this case, I don't have a neutral gray card, so I'm going to choose something that's gray-ish. Um, I'm going to choose, let's say, the foreground, the gravel, click on that, and you notice that, oops, sorry, one more time, you notice that sort of introduces a kind of a cooler tone. Uh, basically what we're saying is that whatever I clicked on will be um, a mid-gray. Um, and I could say, well, you know, that's good, but perhaps I want it a tiny bit warmer so I could tweak it right now. Right now this um, is balanced as if it was uh, 4850 degrees Kelvin. Uh, you see that here but I could maybe tweak it a little bit more, give it a tiny bit of warmth. Um, okay, so I'm going to give it a tiny bit of warmth, color balance. The next is overall um, exposure uh, control. Uh, the image is fine. If I look in the histogram, um, I am not clipping on the left or the right. However, uh, I do have some opportunity, I think, to increase the image brightness. Right now the image feels a little bit dead. Um, and so to make a global exposure adjustment, I can grab the slider. I have to be subtle with this. Let's pull it up to watch the histogram as I'm doing this. The risk is that I start to get quite a lot of contrast between, for example, this area of the tree and the sky. I'm, I'm concerned about that. Let's pull the exposure up because it brings up the mid ground or uh, the center of the photograph, which I like. Let's bring this up. Um, about 0.5, which is the equivalent of about a half a stop of exposure, um, which is enough to slide the tonality of the whites in a, in, in a direction that I like. Uh, so we'll work, with, uh, we'll work with that. The next thing that I'm going to want to do is to look at uh, contrast. Um, and in order to work with contrast, it's generally good to zoom in. So I go down to the lower left-hand corner, I'll come down and I'll go to 100%, which is the actual pixels. And um, I can increase the contrast a little bit. What that's actually doing, if you notice, look at the histogram, it's widening the histogram somewhat. So it's increasing the uh, difference between the, <coughs> excuse me, between the um, darkest and the lightest pixels. So I can play with contrast here. I could also decrease contrast radically. You'll notice the image becomes very flat. I'll do a little tiny bit of contrast. I don't do a lot of contrast enhancement. I tend to do that with curves later. A little bit of contrast. Um, now um, we can adjust for sort of correct some of the consequences of what we've um, created. Uh, so here's the image and it's always nice to go sort of before and after at every step. There's the preview. So if I uncheck that you see where we started which was dead it's feeling warmer, uh, a little bit more inviting at this point. Now let's uh, try to adjust um, our highlights and our shadows. Uh, there are sliders under contrast. It's actually quite useful at this point to hold down the Alt key. Now if I hold down the Alt key and I move my highlights and shadows, you notice if I move my highlights all the way to the right, I'll start to actually see a kind of a custom, more refined clipping area. So I'm going to move this just so that right below where it's clipping. Uh, so I've just brightened uh, the highlights, but uh, basically uh, to the point right before they will begin to clip. Uh, and that is again by holding down the Alt key, you can see that. So I'm going to do it that way. And the same thing with the shadows. Um, let's see if I can, if I brighten the shadows, oops, darken the shadows, hello. Yeah, I can brighten the shadows. I can actually brighten the shadows quite a lot in this image. As a matter of fact, I'll take my finger off the Alt key. This will actually bring out a little bit more dimensionality uh, in those leaves in the back. So I'm not going to be afraid of that. Um, 
The final thing that I'm going to want to adjust is called the white point. These are white and black point. These are the micro adjustments at the end of each of uh, the histogram, the white end and the black end. Same thing, I'm going to hold down uh, the option key and this just is going to really uh, tweak the, the fine clipping point. It's just like a, like a lower level or a, rather a more refined adjustment. So I'm going to do that. Okay, so now I have my, my image. Um, and this is uh, the result of my global edits. Actually, there's one other edit that I might want to do, and that is uh, I want to increase the contrast in what are called the midtones. This is something which will make a big difference, um, uh, particularly when you print. Let's zoom in. I want to increase the contrast in the midtones, and I'll do that with the clarity slider. So let's just take clarity, sort of season to taste. Notice if I do this all the way to the right, you'll see clipping begins to emerge. Um, so I don't want that clipping, uh, but I do want a little bit more contrast, this middle ground contrast. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to crank this to about 40. Okay, and then let's zoom back out again. Uh, and here we are. So before and after. So a lot uh, livelier image just through global edits. Now, one thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to come in here, I'm going to make some local edits in a moment, uh, but I want to show you how we can uh, sort of capture everything we've done to date. Uh, so let's go, uh, first of all, to the very end of uh, the tab panel here, towards the snapshots. Let's go to snapshots. Let's come down to um, the little uh, little tabbed icon at the bottom here next to the trash and click on it it says new snapshots so I'm going to name this snapshot this is going to be a snapshot of the work I've done to date so I'm going to call this my global edits and I'm going to click on this and say okay so now what can I do well if I were to come back to um, the original uh, panel and do all kinds of crazy things to mess it up. I could say, okay, that's you know where I am. How do I get back to uh, the place that I like? Come back to snapshots, click on my global edits, boom. The point of this is that when you're working in Camera Raw, all the edits are captured uh, effectively as, as metadata. We can produce multiple variants, which I'll talk about at some other point. Um, but the nice thing is that we can create snapshots um, of the image. As a matter of fact, uh, just for fun, let's create a snapshot of this in black and white. Let's come up to uh, our one of our little tabs up here. Let's come up to uh, the one that looks like a, a series of lines, HSL grayscale, and let's just click on convert to grayscale. A simple black and white conversion, um, and we could we could play with it, play with the reds of the blacks uh, for contrast or whatnot. Let's not uh, fuss with it too much. Let's simply just come over add another snapshot and we'll call this um, my black and white. So now we have two versions, uh, one of which my global edits in color, one of which my global edits in black and white. So I can produce um, lots of variants um, easily. Okay, at this point I'm going to stop the video um, because the next video will deal specifically with local adjustments.